ఆనరబుల్ జస్టిస్ తాతాచారి అండ్ ద సిటిజన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఢిల్లీ ది సహజోగీస్ we are now at a juncture of history <coughs> where it has become imminent that we have to prove the existence of divine power we have read about this all pervading power in our shastras there has been <coughs> elaborate descriptions about the divine power flowing through us through each and every particle that is being manifested in this universe but so far very few very few people have been able <coughs> to enter into the realm of divinity to feel that divine power those were born at such a higher level that they could not communicate with the rest of the people they only sang the songs of divinity <coughs> which was carried to the people who never felt the existence of that divine power which those people felt it like reality it has been as i have told you before a search of human beings to jump into infinity but the finite rationality and understanding the buddhi of human being could not permeate into the infinity <coughs> so the whole thing became such a mechanical process the religions lost their significance and people could not believe in the talk of religions or divine power but the time has come for people to have a mass entry into the kingdom of god to feel his existence throbbing being within themselves as she told you in 1970 i realized that human beings are not even awakened people and that's why all the mistake has been committed because those who were born on the 10th story could not explain to people who were not even in the first story when i got this human realization and the reasons why this was happening <coughs> i started working on various people and found out their problems on the path of they are awakening in doing so within 2 years time i was hardly able to give realization or i should say the people could realize only to 12 people and it was a very hard task because the people who came to me <coughs> were not so much attracted they felt what is the proof that there is divine power beyond us but when they realized and when they started getting the vibrations from their fingertips the vibrations which we call chaitanya lahari by which they became nirvikara by which they started curing other people by which they started giving awakening to other people 
and giving them realization, it became a proof with them that they have reached self-actualization. It is a truth. It is not falsehood. It is not any propaganda. It has to happen within you. You cannot give false certificate to anybody that it has happened. It has to happen fully into you and you have to feel it that it has happened. And when you use it, you know it has happened. <coughs> the other day you have seen the rising of the Kundalini with your naked eyes. Some of you have never in, even known the word Kundalini. But you have seen the throbbing of the Kundalini, how it rose and how it came up through the spine. When the Kundalini rises, you actually can see the movement of Kundalini. There have been many people who have been talking of Kundalini awakening. Actually, none of them who say so have shown the rising of the Kundalini. The reason being, the Kundalini never rose. The Kundalini only rises when there is somebody who is already enlightened and who knows the job of rising the Kundalini. So they have described that by raising the Kundalini, you actually become very heated up or sometimes you start dancing, sometimes you start shouting and sometimes you get blisters all over your body. <coughs> the way they have described Kundalini, one would think that it is better to remain as you are than to go into such kind of a ordeal where you get completely finished and fagged out. Kundalini is your mother and she rests in the triangular bone which is placed higher than Muladhara Chakra. The triangular bone is known as the Muladhara. You are all, you all know Sanskrit and you know what is the meaning of Muladhara. She rests there and those who try to incite her from the wrong side, Sri Ganesha who is sitting on the Muladhara Chakra gets angry and that anger is expressed which people say that the Kundalini is angry. The Kundalini will never rise. She knows your problems. She loves you. She is the only mother you have and she has been with you for ages, for many lives. So she doesn't rise at all. She stays there. Only Sri Ganesha gets angry because he is supposed to look after the chastity of your mother, the protocol of your mother. <coughs> Now, whether there is Sri Ganesha or not, we start from that. This is from the scratch one has to start. People say that they have seen Sri Ganesha's symbol inside the being. Whether there is Sri Ganesha or not can be verified in Sahaja Yoga. Because when you find somebody suffering like that, you have to request to Sri Ganesha that please don't be angry. The person has done it in his act ignorance and he listens to you, immediately you find such a person becomes cooled down. His blisters disappear and he feels very much comforted. <coughs> Last time in Delhi, if you remember, there was one man who came rushing to me. First he had gone to Bombay and then came he back again to Delhi. He was a resident of Delhi and he told me that somebody has excited his Kundalini and he was running all over the place, helter-skelter, shouting, what heat, what heat, as if lots of wasps have bitten him. I asked him, how did you get your awakening, who was the man who did it? And he told me, and it was such a hideous method, that decency prohibits me to talk about that. And when I saw that, I told him that, how can you believe that God can be achieved through such hideous and useless method? And he was a very educated man. Then I asked Sri Ganesh, Please forgive, because he doesn't know. He is an ignorant person. And somebody who tried to take some money out of him or who tried to show off his knowledge has played with his Kundalini, so please excuse him. And there are so many people who have witnessed that, that immediately he cooled down 
and he was all right. All the deities that are on your Kundalini, whether they are there or not, because somebody has written, because somebody has said it, because they are in the Shastras also, why should we accept? Because rational man doesn't want to accept it. Your children are not going to accept it. We can prove the existence of Sri Ganesh. In the same way we can prove the existence of all these deities that are on the chakras that are within human spine. <coughs> Now to say of Indian culture and Hindu culture and Muslim culture and other cultures, it is most surprising that Kundalini or we can say the primordial Kundalini of the Virata has got all these great incarnations, whether they were Muslims, whether they were Christians, whether they were Indians, seated on the chakra. For example, if you start from the Muladhara chakra upward, then we have got on the second chakra, Swadishtan chakra, Sri Brahma Deva, who is the creative power, creative aspect of God. And His power is Saraswati. You have seen that in Delhi, you all were caught up with Swadishtan chakra. All of you have got this problem of Swadishtan chakra. Because Delhi is a place where we are planning too much. And the power of planning, the power of future thinking comes from Swadishtan Chakra. And that's why many of you are caught up with Swadishtan Chakra. The third chakra, <coughs> which is known as the Nabi Chakra, actually it is known as Manipur Chakra, rests above this triangular bone and it controls the solar plexus in the gross form in the human beings. And this is the chakra which represents our dharma, our religion. Now when I talk of religion immediately the modern mind will get after me saying that what are you talking of these, out of these things. When I say dharma, I mean dharaiti sadharma. You see human beings have got certain religion, as everything has got religion. For example, you take a mango from the mango tree, if you plant it, you get the mango. Or else you can see, as I told you yesterday, that a gold bangle is gold because it is not tarnishable. That is the dharma of gold. The water has got purification, dharma. In the same way, a human being has got his own dharma, which is expressed in the Bible as ten commandments. These are ten dharmas a human being is born with. He is born with it. But he has to establish himself into dharma when he has to go into dharmati state, is beyond dharma. But these ten must be established. If these are not established, we cannot play about with them. If you play about with them, there is a problem in your awakening and in your realization. The Nabi Chakra is the most important one and there rests the great incarnation or we can say the aspect of God which we call as Rana, Narayana himself, Sri Vishnu and his power is Sri Lakshmi. Vishnu represents the sustenance, the Dharma aspect of God and Vishnu <coughs> is responsible for the evolution of human beings. We never find out why a amoeba has become a human being, what has made him come up to the level of a human being and what is going to happen to this human being after all, why is he made a human being? You are made for some purpose. What is going to happen to this human being afterwards? We never think of that. This evolutionary power comes to us through Sri Vishnu himself. Shri Vishnu is not Hindu's God. He doesn't belong to India. He doesn't belong to one particular state or one particular area. He belongs in the primordial being, in the great primordial being whom we call, as Islam they call it, Allahu Akbar. He is the expression of that primordial being 
who is great god has many aspects and one of the aspects is of his greatness and that's why as vishnu he wants us to be great yesterday i told you that the body of virata contains everything that he manifests and we have to realize that we are a part and parcel of that great virata and that we are in the process of realizing him because he we are made in the image of god then comes the most important part of our body is the stomach it represents the bhavasagara is the maya in which we are placed we are born in this bhavasagara when shri vrishnu himself incarnates again and again you have seen as matsya avatara kurma avatara and he himself leads the human being in their evolutionary path he is held by another <coughs> another deity whom we call as primordial guru the adi guru dattatreya shri vishnu rises from bhavasagara and gives you the leadership to rise within yourself he builds up your awareness step by step and today you are as, as a human being in your being itself he creates two more chakras one on the hridaya chakra and above that is the vishuddhi chakra which is placed here which is called as the complete incarnation of shri krishna at the vishuddhi chakra shri vishnu completes his incarnation he is the complete virata he is represented here in the vishuddhi chakra whether he is there or not you can find out when the kundalini is awakening on the left hand side of the virata in the heart resides shiva himself shiva is the symbol of god's aspect of existence it is shiva who makes the whole manifestation to exist and when he doesn't like the show when he doesn't like the play he switches off that's why he is also known as a destroyer if he likes it if it is moving in the right direction he continues to watch the show but if he doesn't like it he just switches off <coughs> so there are three aspects of god we have seen one is of his stiti existence another of his creativity by brahma deva and the third one which is the evolutionary but which is based on dharma itself a one person can have three attitudes can have three aspects god has many more aspects but the aspects that are manifested are these three <clears throat> now the these three aspects the essence of these aspects or we can say the innocence of these three aspects is combined in the primordial guru or the adi guru dattatreya who resides in the bhavasagara and helps shri vishnu for your evolution now he has taken many incarnations mainly 10 incarnations and these are very important and we have to understand them in their full entirety if you accept him as dattatreya you have to also accept him as raja janaka it's easy for a hindu mind to accept raja janaka but they cannot accept mohammed sahab who was the same as raja janaka it is a fact which can we can prove it on your kundali a person who is suffering from cancer of the stomach now this is the thing when i say that sahaj yoga can cure your cancer you have to give up certain notions that we have in our head a person supposing he is a hindu and he is suffering from the stomach cancer i have to ask him to take the name of mamata if i fail to ask him or if i convince do not convince him i cannot cure his cancer i'm sorry i tell him i just cannot do it but if he is a muslim 
I have to tell him, you have to take the name of the Tat. Human beings like fools have taken away the living flowers of one tree and now are fighting on something that is dead. He was the Tatreya. There is no doubt about it. And his daughter Fatima was nobody else but Sita Janaki herself. And her two sons, Hassan and Hussein, were nobody else but Lava and Kusha. They were born again and again. They were born as Mahavira and Buddha. And then they were born as Hassan and Hussein. It is only possible through Sahaja Yoga to realize that this is the truth, this is the fact. He was born as Nanaka and Nanaki was nobody else but Janaka. In Nanaka's life he has expressed it. Of course, I don't know how many people have read about Nanaka. Nanaka one day was sleeping and his feet were towards Kaaba. And people were getting vibrations from that side. So they said, what are you doing? Your feet are towards Kaaba. So he said, all right, I'll turn my feet on the other side. And they started getting vibrations from the other side. They said, what, Kaaba has moved or what? He has, in a way, shown. But how dare they say many things? When they said very few things, they have killed all these people and tortured them. If you read Bama Saab's life, you will feel what foolish people we have been, the way we have tortured. For fanaticism, the way he was killed actually was poisoned. He had no place where to hide his head the way people were after him because he was telling the truth. And fanaticism is one thing he fought. So Guru Tattva is killed as soon as you become a fanatic person. Your Guru Tattva is immediately finished as soon as you take to fanaticism of any kind. <clears throat> you come up now to the heart chakra. Heart chakra is divided into three parts. In the center of the heart chakra resides Jagadamba herself. But the left side, as I have told you, resides Shiva and his power is Parvati. When Parvati herself <coughs> separates her identity with her Lord and enters in the center to save her children from the domination of the evil spirits, then she resides in the center and she is the Jagadamba. This is called a sacred heart in the Bible. She resides as Jagadamba. She has taken many incarnations to save. Today there was Lalita Panchami, they sang the song of Lalita. The way she took her incarnations to fight the evil forces, to save the bhaktas from the domination of satanic and depraving personalities. She is there within you also. If not awakened, she can be awakened. She is all the time there to save you from those satanic forces. Today. So many Rakshasas have taken birth in this Kali Yuga. They are here as some of them call themselves gods and godmen. But from their behavior and from their character you can make out that they are not human beings, they are less than human beings. All such horrid incarnations have come in a camouflage, in the Maya. Because this is Kali Yuga. Ravana is not going to come out as Ravana. He is not going to say, I am Ravana. But from his ideologies and from his methods, you can make out that he is the Ravana. They are challenging religion today. There are people who are preaching that sex should be used for sublimation into God. How can that be? Sex has nothing to do with your awakening. Because sex point, as I told you, is much lower than the Muladhara where your mother is at. It's such an absurd idea which is already taken over in the West. I don't know how people have lost all their brains not to understand. And such ideologies are today spreading in this country. And I want Justice Tata Chari to put little pressure to the people who have made laws 
to see that these horrid things do not come, that they are not accepted by people, because when you subject yourself to such horrible satanic forces, they come to you as entities, they possess you, you get possessed. Then you start giving everything that you have. Whatever money you have, you give to them. Whatever attention you have, you give it to them. Ultimately, you find out that they have now landed in the courts and now are enjoying some sentence for life. It is better that you should be all want, that you must understand that a religious person, a person who is really awakened cannot take even a single pie from you. When you are so self-respecting, how can a person, the one who has got the blessings of God, will accept anything from you? This is the way they satisfy your ego, that you feel that you have been able to purchase a religious personality. You cannot purchase God in the market. You must understand that. And when a person tries to satisfy your ego by doing all these things, you must know that it is a it is an act which is adharmic. Man must understand that God is above everything. It is His grace that can take you there. You cannot do anything about it. It is He who should pour His grace on you. What can the seed do when it wants to germinate? Nothing. But to be there and the gardener pours His grace his love on that seed and it sprouts by itself. That is what Sahaja is, that means that it is born with you. Like the seed, you have to sprout. But you have to be very careful with those horrible destructive forces that have come in so many ways. I can tell you there are sixteen Rakshasas whom I know have been taken by. Mahishasur is there, Narakasur is there, Ruttasur is there. There are six Rakshasinis who have taken birth and you have no idea as to what they are doing. They will do all kinds of tricks to convince you that they are godly people, but you must only ask for the Supreme, for the last which is being described by so many sages like Markandeya, like Shankaracharya. We are so lucky that we have had such great people who have elaborately said, who have clearly said that this is what is the Supreme, ask for the reality. And do not ask for something cheap. You cannot cheapen God. You do not try to mold Him in your own small cups. <coughs> Above that chakra, as I told you, on the right hand side of the uh, of the heart chakra is placed a, the deity of Sri Rama and Sita. Now they are placed on the side because he was he was made to forget his power as Vishnu. He became a human being in every way. He had to be a human being every way, and that's why he behaved in such a manner that he showed the Maryada Purushottam. He is on the right side. He is the ideal king about which the philosophers have told. Him. He is the person who does all the Rajakaran. He is the person who, who gives us the way, the evolutionary stage to which a person who is in this world and who is in position, higher, uh, higher levels of administration should follow to. And he is Maryada Purushottama Rama, who is on the right hand side. And you know his power is Sita. She is Adi Shakti, who is born again and again. On the Vishuddhi Chakra rests the great deity of Sri Krishna. He is, represents the Virata, the Akbar, Allahu Akbar. He, he is represented here. And this is the finger for Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna has manifested and has shown to Arjuna his Virata Swarupa. But Arjuna got frightened. Imagine that time, it was not possible for Arjuna to see all that, he got frightened. Now the, in the Kali Yuga, the time has come for you to see the Virata. You can, if you get your Realization through Sahaja Yoga, if you raise your awareness to that extent where you can see Virata, you can see that. 
<coughs> about Sri Krishna. I need not say much, you all know about him. But the essence of his life, the essence of his teaching was one simple thing, that it is all a play going on. When you are complete, when you are some poor, then only you feel you are just a Sakshi. When you are a Sakshi, you are watching the whole thing. Here at this point, you meet oneness with complete Vairagya within and love outside. The Vairagya within flows at love outside. Actually, it's such a wonderful thing which cannot be explained. For example, today's puja filled me up with vibrations. So many vibrations started flowing through my chakras that I didn't know what to do. And then they started flowing out. That's why yesterday I said that Sahaja Yoga teaches you how you become the capitalist of vibrations and when it flows out, you know it is the communism. Because you cannot help it. Once they are inside, you want to give it away. You have to feed others with what you have got because you cannot carry on with that capital that you have achieved. You see, it is so spontaneous and automatic that the release is necessary. For example, if I have such a problem, I must meet my surgeons. If I don't find them, I go to the sea and stand there and give my vibration to the sea or to the tree or to the akasha. Because I must give way because they are working out and they have to cross this finite being in which the infinite is pushing through. It is such an interesting thing that when we say that you press the feet of your parents, you get the blessing. It is absolute truth. Because when you press the feet of your parents, the, the chakras that move the vibrations, they come into us and they soothe us. While they feel soothed and we also feel soothed. Above this chakra is the Agya chakra, which is a very, very important chakra, which is the door, which is the door of the Sahastra. At the Adnya chakra, besides Mahavishnu. Those who have read about Mahavishnu in the Markandeya Purana or in the Devi Bhagavat, you will know what I am talking about. But we do not know when He incarnated and who He was. He was nobody else but Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the only son of Mary who was Radha. She was Mahalakshmi. It was Mahalakshmi who incarnated as Mary. And Jesus Christ was nobody else but Mahavishnu. If you want to know about Mahavishnu, you must read Devi Bhagavad. There he is described in all elaboration. But whether he is there or not, whether it's a fact or not, can be seen. Because somebody's Agya Chakra is caught up, we have to take the name of Jesus Christ. He is Omkara Swarup. So you can take even the name of Omkara, but you have to take the name of Jesus Christ. If you do not take his name, if you do not accept him, I cannot open your Agya Chakra. I am sorry, but it is so. Because for Hindus it's very difficult to accept and for Christians it is very difficult to accept the other side of it. You see, you, whether you accept it or not, that's a fact. Because of your secluded temperaments, because of your limited energies, because of your, I should say, a very narrow vision of God and religion, you cannot accept the truth which is so wide and so great. But it's a fact and it's to be seen. In the Adnya Chakra, he decides. He controls your ego and super ego both. He removes the entities that are in you and he kills your darpa, your ego. He looks after your ego also. If you bend before somebody who is not a realized soul, who is a who is just doing anadhikar cheshta, unauthorized, he is asking your surveillance or your subjection, he gets angry. And that's how the Agya Chakra closes down. Agya Chakra is in the center of the optic thalamus of the human being and is one of the most important things. And once it opens out, it's much easier for you to get realization. Among you, there are at least 50% people who are already realized, who know how to handle the Kundalini, who have mastered the Kundalini. So when I'm telling you, it's just a repetition, but there are many newcomers, that's why I have to tell them about it. The last is the most important, is the limbic area, where resides the Sahasrara. There are 982 nerves in our brain, and there are eight other nerves, so we can say that there are 1,000 nerves. There is no use quarreling with these doctors, because they'll be all the time fighting with you and telling you, no, no, it is not so, it is not so. 
but they will never come and see because we have cured cancer we have cured so many people they will never come and see us we have so many doctors who have been realized now and who accept that surge yoga is the only way the cancer can be cured but still they are not going to accept us because the ego is too much how are they going to accept it because that's what they are depending on and now they have to accept they have to jump to something are they going to accept christ are they going to <laughs> accept ganesha oh god that's too much for scientists to accept shri ganesh because christ is the human incarnation of shri ganesh he is the embodiment of eternal childhood <coughs> in the sahasrara we have the integration of all these chakras which we call as the seven pithas they are placed there and because of this integration in the sahasrara one has to work out on this sahasrara now this sahasrara opening happened when 1970 when i saw how one can handle all these seven chakras in this sahasrara here recites shri bhagavati who coordinates cooperates with those seven chakras in such a manner that all the permutations and combinations of the seven chakras can be worked out in this sahasrara once she works it on that she can give you realization too and that's how we have got seven chakras on top of this there are three more abstract forms in which one has to rise about this is the trikona which is the brain about that lies the ardha matra as they call it then the bindu and then the they call it the vartu but the thing is all these things i am talking about should not mean anything to you unless and until you have achieved something because this all you can read in in the books i am not here to give you some books you know that so far i have not written any books and i don't know if i am really going to complete the so called book i am writing because once you write the books people start to see getting involved into it so much that they do not ask for the reality so you first see the reality yourself now all over the world there are sahajogi who have seen the kundalini rising who have mastered the kundalini who know what is happening because after realization you start feeling it on your fingers you feel the chaitanya lahari coming into you but not only that it's not only that the chaitanya lahari start coming but it is the communication is established with the all pervading power with god and you start feeling on the fingers what is the problem of the other person for example if you place your hands towards a person immediately if you get a burning here you know it is abnatural now for a person who is novice so who is recently come for the first time who places that he will say this is the finger even a child can say that my granddaughter who is a born realized so she can just say like this you know from the distance she tells me nani ye hai now she knows the names also so the communication is given to you silent it burns you it makes you uneasy sometimes you feel the throbbing sometimes you feel something is flowing in that's how you know it is a subjective knowledge for this you do not have to go to school anybody knows if it is burning there so this is the finger that is burning but i am here to decode all that to tell you and then you verify it you tell it and find out if it is so or not not only that you feel the other person but with that you can raise the kundalini of another person with the raising of the kundalini you can remove the problems that are physical emotional and mental by giving them realization you can remove their spiritual problems and that's how they enter also into the kingdom of god where they communicate honorable justice tatachari 